My name is Vicky Knight. I'm a clinical services executive for a company called Roland Australia and New Zealand. Thank you, Vicky. And so uh, we've got you here at the uh, digital health studio at HIC. What brings you to HIC today? Well, obviously, it's a great um, networking opportunity to have all of these digital health people in one room, Yeah, cover them all off in one. But uh, we're also presenting uh, a few papers during the conference yep. about dis- digital transformation and how we've helped our customers to achieve success and clinical outcomes. Amazing. And tell me a little bit more about so Roland's role in uh, that digital health, so that digital transformation within healthcare. What, what role does it play in that Correct. effect? Yeah, so Roland is um, a company, a digital health company, been around for about 30, more than 30 years, and we uh, produce in-house and um, distribute some digital health platforms that help with communication, with collaboration and with workflows. Uh, so we're very um, passionate about helping our customers, so the hospitals and aged care uh, sites, their patients, family and carers. We're helping them to, to get efficient and uh, safe clinical practices in place using digital platforms. Excellent. And so what does that, like, who would touch the platform the most? Would it be from the, it sounds like the clinicians and the administrators, those working within the facilities, is that right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's varied. It depends on whether it's a new greenfield site or it's a, a redevelopment of, a, of like a, a ward or an aged care facility. But, but generally, our end users are mostly the clinician and the patients and their families and carers, I would say. The people who make the decisions about the technology or the digital platform that may or may not go into a facility is often the administrators. So we kind of touch all of them. Yeah. You, you touched on this point of it's different with the Greenfield sites. And uh, from, from my experience, it's always great when you've got a clean slate to work from and you can put something fresh in. But, you know, we kind of know that healthcare's not going to work like that always. And you touched on this importance of digital transformation earlier. How do you find in Australia that that process of taking hospitals, aged care clinics, uh, healthcare facilities from pens and paper and manila folders uh, right up through to doing something cool with technology. Yeah, so I think we've come a long way in the last, you know, 15, 20 years and probably even further in the last probably five. But it is a, it's a full space to work in. The thing that I actually like the most now is that health is bringing on digital consultants. You know, so we now have chief, you know, nursing information officers and um, midwifery officers and making sure that the clinicians get a seat at the table. That, to me, is the most important thing. If you don't have the clinicians embedded in making the decisions about the platforms and the technology, you you end up with stuff that is broken, not not. Um, joined together and not as efficient. So when you can bring those clinicians in, the people who know about the processes and will also be the people who are going to be using the, the digital platforms going forward, you get much better out. Yeah. No, I totally hear you on that. In terms of the way that the Roland kind of approach things, because we know within healthcare settings generally, there's a lot of different platforms. There's disparate information. There's there's data flying everywhere, which creates mess and confusion and inefficiency sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, but and often I, I get I get the sentiment from a lot of CIOs and CTOs is that I don't need just like another bit of tech to add on top of it and try and solve this tech problem. Right. Like, how do you go about this this need to kind of play within the ecosystem with to to bring all these different bits and pieces together? Yeah. So I think importantly, I think all digital health technology companies need to be thought leaders and they need to be saying we all have to speak to each other and we all have to integrate and we all have to work together to get the outcome because that's what's most important. Being a clinician myself, I know how frustrating it is to work in an environment with 50 different platforms that I have to sign into 50 different times. So I think from Roland's perspective, we're very clinically focused and we have a fairly, you know, good and large clinical team, and it's our role to be consultants. So we're out there working with the end users saying, have you thought about this and what about that? And trying to bring everyone to the table. Yeah. So in uh, the building environment, trying to make sure that they bring together all of the people that they need to bring together to make sure they get a, 
a really good functional platform. Yeah, no, that co-creation piece is super important. Um, you're you're speaking at HIC, is that right? I am. Tell me that. So uh, where I'm speaking on um, the patient room of the future. So it's a little bit about what we just talked about, which is this is the room of the future. This is what it will be and this is what it will mean for me as a patient. Yeah. And it puts the word me and my into the room because at the moment a patient gets put in a room. It's not really their room. It's not set up for them. It doesn't interact with them. It doesn't take their information and do stuff for them. You have to have people coming in and out of the room doing that. So my my talk is about how do we get that end state where we've got all the technology already, but how do we get it so that it works so that when I come into a room as a patient, it's my runner and yeah. it's, it's set up for me. And when I come into that room as a nurse... It's my patient's room and it's set up for me. And all of that stuff is done automatically. Yeah. We've got the smarts. We just haven't joined the door. Yeah. I'm going to hazard a guess to the, the, the average patient uh, wouldn't be super excited about going into a room that requires you to do a bunch of stuff to technology. It kind of almost you want that technology to work behind the scenes to allow a patient to just and not have to worry about. That's right. Yeah. And... If you have, if you need somebody to go into a room to set that up, to set that up, to set that up, that takes away from me caring for my patient. Yeah. So I'd like to release time to care by having the room actually do what it needs to do. Yeah. It can turn on, you know, it can speak to the patient uh, administration system. It can fire up my digital bed card. It can turn on my patient engagement entertainment solution. It can give me... Um, augmented reality education that is specific to me and my diagnosis, my age, whatever, whatever's in the medical record, it should be able to do all of that. And then when I come in as a nurse, I should be able to see all of that and interact and provide all of that information and see it and um, document it at the point of care. I shouldn't have to leave the room with a squirrely piece of paper um, or go and find a computer on wheels to document what I just did. Uh, the room needs to do that, and it should have predictive and analytics to it so that it detects my heart. So I'm an older person, I've, I've come in with a urinary tract infection, I'm going to be a risk for a fall. It should arm the sensors in the room, should arm my bed, it should protect me automatically. It should need me, the nurse... To go in and set all of that up. Yeah, the Jetsons basically. Well, maybe oh, not the Jetsons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Jetsons. So in terms of from Jetsons down to like Manila folders, whereabouts are you right now in terms of Roland and, and where we're, we're uh, here today? And what can we look forward to seeing in the next kind of 6, 12, 24? Yeah, so I think we're, what we can look forward to seeing is that, that digitally smart room. So that room that uses the predictive analytics to protect me um, as a patient and embedding some of that predictive analytics that we know we can get out of um, the patient record to set some of that stuff up. That's, that's where we're aiming. Yeah.